Aldi. A discount grocer with a cult following that's now the fastest growing grocery store in the U.S. They have more than 2,200 locations and they're growing by 100 stores a year, nudging ever closer to rivals like Walmart, Costco, and Kroger. I'm Jen Kleinhens and this is Choice Hacking. Today we're breaking down the billion dollar marketing secrets of Aldi. The Aldi store experience could be described as minimalistic. There aren't any fancy displays with the latest deals. There's almost no in-store marketing. There's limited product selection, almost no well-known brands. And if they run out of something, it's just gone. A lot of brands wouldn't survive such a quirky store experience, but Aldi just seems to make customers love it more. There's some good business and psychology reasons for their approach. A dead simple store experience isn't just cheaper and easier for Aldi to maintain with fewer workers, but it also means that customers are dealing with a lighter cognitive load. Cognitive load describes how much information we're trying to take in, process, or remember at any given time. When our brains are overtaxed, we tend to feel stressed and make less than optimal choices, like impulse buying a piece of chocolate cake after a long, stressful day at work. But when we make decisions with less information overwhelming us, like you do at Aldi, shopping feels easier, faster, and less stressful. And that's particularly important for Aldi's core customers. Many are low income and are already dealing with a stressed and overtaxed brain because of the everyday financial strain and trade-offs they're constantly forced to make just to survive. For a grocery store with such a tiny store size, Aldi outsells almost all other grocery stores per square foot. In fact, it makes $662 of revenue. That's more than Walmart and Dollar General combined. They're small because Aldi carries fewer products. According to the Food Industry Association, Aldi only has 1,650 SKUs, compared to the more than 30,000 items in a typical American grocery store. And while a traditional grocery aisle in a Walmart has nearly 300 salad dressing options, an Aldi store in the U.S. will have fewer than 20, and Aldi in Europe only carries about four. You might be surprised to learn that limiting the number of products in their stores actually increases Aldi's sales. It's down to a behavioral science principle known as choice overload. Choice overload describes the human tendency to become mentally overloaded if we have to pick between too many options. Studies have found that too many choices can actually cause anxiety, disappointment, and even depression. If there's too many options, we feel like we've never made the right one. When there are fewer options, it's easier and faster to pick one, and we feel better about the choice that we finally make. Unlike most grocery stores, Aldi's are completely controlled by them. They don't let big brands like Nestle, Kraft Heinz, or Mondelez crowd their stores with marketing or sales promotions. That's because Aldi sells, almost exclusively, store brands. Although they're distributed under the Aldi name, most are manufactured by the same well-known brands that Aldi appears to be ripping off. The names of the brands in Aldi will give you a clue. General Mills becomes Millville. Olive Garden Italian Dressing becomes Tuscan Garden Restaurant-style Italian Dressing. And DiGiorno Pizza becomes Mama Cozy's. Stocking its own brands allows Aldi to better control costs in manufacturing and marketing, as well as giving a little wink and a nudge to customers who, by now, have figured out that most generic brands are made in the same factories as the more well-known brands. On top of that, Aldi doesn't do reward cards, loyalty programs, or offer coupons. Not only does this make Aldi a simpler experience for customers, it also helps trim Aldi's marketing and staffing costs. Customers never feel like they're playing a savings game with the store, clogging up Aldi's tiny aisles while they try to figure out how to save an extra dollar on dish soap. It also makes customers feel like they're getting the best price that Aldi can offer on a product, building long-term trust in the brand. Aldi's use of psychological pricing is pretty genius. It uses products like milk as loss leaders in its stores. That means Aldi doesn't make any money on milk, but instead loses money in exchange for driving customers into the store. They know that almost everyone needs milk, and if they make theirs the cheapest in town, they can get more people to shop in Aldi. This strategy also uses a combination of two psychology principles, anchoring and scarcity. Aldi uses a sticker on its milk case that says, limit six, please. Signs like these get people thinking about scarcity. Scarcity describes our attraction to things that are in limited supply. 
Basically, we want something more, the harder it is to get. So when people see limit six, they think, why is it limited? I only need one gallon of milk, but I wonder if that means all these running low. I better get two just in case. This sign also anchors customers to the number six. Anchoring describes how the presence of a number can change how we view subsequent numbers because we're comparing that information to what we just saw. For example, let's say you're trying to sell your house for $400,000 and someone offers you $250,000. You'd probably say no, but you might eventually accept a $350,000 offer because in comparison to $250,000, 350,000 suddenly feels like a lot, even if you really wanted 400,000 for the house. In the Aldi example, most people wouldn't know what to do with six gallons of milk, but anchoring bias means that the presence of the number six could get them to consider buying more than one gallon of milk. When customers try a new store or a new product, they take a risk. And people really hate to take risks because it means we might lose. Aldi's twice as nice guarantee helps eliminate that feeling of risk by offering to both replace an item and refund the customer's money if a product is unsatisfactory. Why do money back guarantees work? It's down to a psychological principle called zero risk bias. It describes our tendency to prefer options where risk has been eliminated. People hate to lose. In fact, the psychological pain of losing is more than two times the pleasure of gaining the same thing. So if you lost a $20 bill, you might feel anxiety and anger at an eight on a scale of 10. But if you found $20, you'd only feel happiness at about a four on a scale of 10. People just like options better when it feels like they can't lose. 